Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Crazy Bat Lady. Today I wanted to talk about Yolan. I want to show you how to build her. Um, I just got her today and I am so impressed. She's actually incredibly strong. Um, elemental skill, in fact, is like way better than I expected. And she just blew my expectations out of the water. So I'm going to show you how to build her, uh, what best artifacts, weapons, team members, so on and so forth. So without further ado, let's get right into this and talk about her talents. Now Yelan's um, ascension stat is crit rate, so this makes it easier to build her for crit stats, which you're going to want a lot of. As well as HP. So her first skill, her normal attack... Um, you won't be using her normal attack very much, per se, but you'll be more using her aimed shot, her charge attack. It has an interesting mechanic to where um, if you're outside of combat, you will gain a charge. It's kind of like a Ganyu shot, but it's instantaneous, and you can um, get another charge of this by using your elemental skill through enemies and... Also for leaving combat for a certain amount of time. Um, I'll go more in depth on this later, but it does scale off of HP and as you can see the uh, breakthrough barb damage, which is the explosion, is actually pretty decently scaled. In fact, I'm going to up that right now to level 9. It is worth it. Now let's move on to our elemental skill. So you're pretty much always going to be wanting to hold this. You can tap it, but I highly recommend holding it. Unless you're against a boss. If you're against a boss, tap. If you're against hordes of enemies, hold. Because you can run through a ton of enemies with this. It explodes and does big damage, too. It has pretty high scaling. Uh, not too bad of a cooldown. And yeah, overall, just a great ability. Um, her elemental burst is very similar to Xing Cho's, except for its skills exclusively off of HP, as with her other skills, making her a very different but very good type of off-field damage dealer. You get three um, shots per hit, uh, the duration's 15 seconds, cooldown of 18 seconds, and a kind of high energy cost at 70, but it's definitely manageable. Her first passive ability, Turn Control, gives her a flat 6% HP and further HP percentage based on the different elements of party members you have, up to 30%. So if you have four different elemental types, you'll get 30% extra HP. And this is a really nice bonus, as you're most likely going to be using more than one element. If you're using just Yelan on the team, you'll get... Um, you know, a lot less than if you're using four different elements. But I wouldn't stress this too much because between two and four, it's not the hugest um, damage number, but definitely a nice bonus. Now, her second passive ability, Adept with Ease, as long as you have your ultimate up, the character that's active will deal 1% more damage. This is increases by 3.5% damage every second, up to a maximum of 50% damage. This isn't attack percentage, but damage percentage. So this can get absolutely crazy, especially for a character like Hu Tao. However, this will be reset when you cast your ultimate again. So it you, you probably won't get up to 50%, but still nonetheless a very good ability. Very nice for any of your party members to enjoy. Um, her last passive, uh, you gain 25% more rewards when dispatched on a Liwa expedition for 20 hours or more. So that's kind of whatever, but it, it's nice to have. Okay, so I want to talk about um, her elemental skill. You can get some really nice vapes off with this, especially with how often you can cast it. Yeah, that's, that's not too bad. You essentially want to prime the enemies um, 
and then run through them with Yelan. For instance, cast Pyronado with Shungling and make sure that they're affected by Pyro. And then you use her elemental skill through them and it'll do the vaporize. You can also use this to freeze. It's actually pretty fun because you can like go way far away from them and they'll just like freeze dead in their tracks. If you have uh, like Kazuha or if you have Venti, like this can definitely be a really nice crowd control method. And not to mention, it can hit a lot of enemies at once. Like, if they're grouped together, um, it, I don't think there's a cap to the amount of enemies. So with Yelan, you want to make sure that you cast her elemental skill often and make sure to use her charge attack when available as well. As soon as you enter combat, you'll have this very powerful AoE charge attack. And you can get another charge back by performing an elemental skill through enemies. There is a chance this won't work, but most of the time it'll work. So you can see I have another charge. Um, you can also get one from being out of combat. And when it says out of combat, it literally means like near no enemies. So like in the overworld, this won't work in Spiral Abyss. As you can see, I have no charge attack. Um, I'll either have to do an angel skill or go away from enemies for a little bit. But nonetheless, it's very worth using. Um, oh yeah, one more thing. She can actually run pretty fast using this ability. So if you're just like getting around, um, it's a really good way to get go fast and not use stamina. So now that you've got the basics down, let's learn how to bring Yelan to her maximum potential using party buffs and such. The first thing I'll mention is that Bennett is actually completely useless for Yelan. And I'll do some examples in a second of why. Bennett uses attack percentage, and it's completely useless for her. Now here's her base attack um, with crits, and this time I'll use Bennett, and I'll keep him uh, next to them so that the Vaporize doesn't interact with it, but making sure to go back in a circle. As you can see, the damage is not better, because her ultimate does and elemental skill do not skill off attack. Only HP percentage. Now Mona, on the other hand, Mona is going to give her a massive damage buff because she makes enemies more susceptible to damage. And using Elon with her, um, they're actually really good teammates for each other, as well as Zhang Li, and also um, Geo Resonance will work too. Um, and of course, the Veer Desert Venerer set to make them more susceptible to damage as well. There are also a couple other ways to buff her damage by decreasing defense, such as using Razor's Constellation 4 or using Lisa's Ultimate. You can also use Raiden Shogun for her passive to boost elemental burst damage. Okay, so moving on to weapons. Without a doubt, her best weapon is her signature weapon, the Aqua Simulacra. This one has huge crit damage and also HP percentage. Another really good weapon is the Skyward Harp. I would say this is her second best because it has crit rate and crit damage. The high base attack does not matter, which is why you can actually use three star weapons for her and it'll work just fine. The polar star will be okay too. The stringless is also an amazing option. If you have a refinement five stringless, I highly recommend trying that out. You can also use any of the crit rate weapons just for the substat, uh, such as Viridescent Hunt or Black Cliff Orbo, but there are actually better three star options because the passives on these won't do anything for you. Um, there is, of course, the Favonius Warbow and the Sacrificial Bow. Both of these have high amounts of energy recharge and are really good if you're running Emblem of Severed Fate. And Sacrificial Bow will pretty much guarantee you to always have your elemental burst up. Favonius is not bad as well, and it'll also give energy to your party. So these are both really fine options. And there's also the event weapon that will give you some energy recharge as well. And also a passive that isn't completely useless. It does have high base attack, so that doesn't matter. The Moon's Moon is also another option that you can use. It, it does have attack percentage, which is unfortunate, but it has a passive that boosts your elemental burst damage by a percentage. And 
I only recommend using this if you have higher refinements of it. Um, so for three star options, you've got the Sharpshooter's Oath, which actually has much higher crit damage than the Blackcliff Warbow, and also increased damage to weak spots for when you launch your charged shot. And since the base damage doesn't matter, you can use these without worrying too much. The Recurve Bow has high HP percentage and is also a really good option. So, like, I would definitely rate these pretty high on our usability list. Um, so that's pretty cool to have a character that can make use of three-star weapons without worrying too much. Kind of like Albedo with the Harbinger of Dawn. All right, now let's talk about her artifacts. I'm going to say right now, she doesn't really have a best in slot artifact set. So running two piece sets is the best option currently. I've got Tenacity of the Millilith and Heart of Death equipped, which gives me some pretty nice damage. But you can also run some other two pieces. I wouldn't recommend running four piece Heart of Death because it has attack percentage and you don't need that. Also normal attacks, so you're not going to be using your normal attacks. Also, four-piece Tenacity of Millilith might sound good, but it's kind of hard to keep up. A four-piece Noblesse may work. If you don't have another Noblesse user on your team, you can definitely use that. Um, or you can just take the two-piece Noblesse, because that will buff her elemental burst damage by 20%. And that's always good. Um, there's also the Emblem of Severed Fate. You will want to make sure that you focus more on energy recharge if you're running this, such as running an energy recharge weapon or maybe even an energy recharge sands. But overall, I would suggest running HP sands. More on that in a second. Uh, for substats on all of these, you're going to want to make sure that you get lots of HP percentage, crit damage, crit rate, and energy recharge. Elemental Mastery won't hurt. But it's not needed. And there is a recommended stats thing at the top of the screen now that you can look, but her stats aren't there yet because she's like brand new. Um, as I said before, two piece Heart of Death is really good. Also, two piece Tenacity um, and the ones I just mentioned. Don't worry about attack percentage at all. Just try and get HP and as much of it as you can, as long as, as well as crit stats. Now the sands pretty much hands down HP is going to be the best, but you can run energy recharge if you have a lot of HP in the substats. If you don't, I wouldn't recommend it. Of course, hydro damage goblet. If you don't have a good hydro damage goblet, if you do have a decent HP one, it could work until you get a good hydro damage goblet. So you are going to want all the water damage you can possibly get for her, being that that's her damage source. And her hat, you're going to want either crit rate or crit damage, whichever one you need more of. So I do hope at some point that they release a artifact set that will synergize better with her, but for now this is what we have. You might be wondering if a four-piece Shimanawa or for four-piece Wander would be good for her charge shots. Well, not so much. Because the amount of time you're going to be using her charge shots is not nearly as much as a character like Ganyu. It will give you that attack bonus once in a while, but overall, I would say it's not worth the trouble at all. Another great thing about Yewon is that she can fit into so many different teams, such as this Hu Tao team right here. She just works wonders here, and I actually like using her better than Xing Cho. Which is not to say Xing Cho is bad anymore at all. They're both fine, and that means that you can run one of each on both halves of the Abyss. So you get the Vapes for Hu Tao, you've got Sucrose for the Swirl, and Zhong Li for the Shred, and to make sure you don't die. Yelan isn't the squishiest, but she's not going to be out most of the time. It's mostly going to be Hu Tao on this team that's going to be out. Um, of course, she works well with um, out, uh, Geo Resonance as well, so you can throw Albedo or Traveler or who else in there that you want to use. Any kind of vape team is great for her because she's a great vape enabler. So if you want to run Shungling's Pyronado and Sucrose as the catalyst, um, slap Mona and Yelan in there and you'll have a pretty destructive team. You'll be getting really big vaporize hits and also big burst for Mona because of her elemental burst. 
which gives 58% damage bonus at level 9. And that is not too shabby. It also does a lot of damage on its own. She can also battery Elon and vice versa, so that's another really great option. You can run Xing Cho with her if you want to, for that very reason, because they batter each other. You can run her in a freeze team if you want. Um, like if you have Sucrose or Venti, Kazuha, um, Ayaka, Ganyu, just something that you can group and freeze. That's going to work wonders. Of course, Taser works great too. Um, this team's really fun. I tried this one out and I liked it a lot. Uh, of course, you can also run like Barbara and um, Beto if you want, just to make sure that you have two Hydro and two Electro. This won't affect her performance too bad, only having two elements. So you can see here, this is like the budget option of that last team. Because everybody has Barbara. Uh, not not catching. But you can put Sucrose in there too for a different kind of Taser team. Plus then you'll have three different elements. Here's a little example of the Taser team in action. I'm still just so impressed how much her elemental skill does. Like, I was not expecting that at all. So yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. So I'm just gonna say it right now. She has some really good constellations. Now I never recommend rolling for constellations on five stars, but if you're like a spender or a whale, um, she's definitely worth going for her constellations. And the good news is that her constellation one is one of her best ones you get an additional charge on her elemental skill. This means you can have your elemental burst up a lot more often, pretty much always, and also be doing a lot more damage because her elemental skill hits like a dump truck. So definitely worth picking up if you really like Yulan. Um, you have the primos to spend, most of us won't, but you know. Her constellation two is very similar to um, Xing Cho's Constellation, I can't remember which one, but it gives her an additional water arrow and it deals 14% of her max HP as Hydro damage. It happens once every 8 point, I mean, sorry, once every 1.8 seconds. So pretty strong, not as strong as her first Constellation, but pretty good. Constellation 3 raises the level of her ultimate by 3, so that's always good. Her four increases all party members max HP for 25 seconds for every opponent marked by lifeline. Um, this can go up to a maximum of 40%. So if you're running her with like uh, characters like Diona, Hu Tao, Zhang Li, this is going to work wonders, especially if there's a lot of enemies. Like let's say you dash through like six enemies, you're going to get 40% max HP for all of your party members for 25 seconds. That's a pretty good duration. So yeah, definitely definitely a good one right here. Um, yeah, really strong constellation for sure. Um, her constellation five is gonna increase the number of her elemental skill, of course, and her constellation six. Uh, this one's really interesting. Um, after she uses her ultimate, she enters what is called a mastermind state. Now, in this state, all of her normal attacks will be considered charged attacks and use the special breakthrough barbs, which is the explosion. And also they're buffed, dealing 156% of a normal breakthrough barbs damage. So it lasts 20 seconds and um, you can get these charged attacks off five times. So this is actually pretty insane. I would love to go look this up and see in action because it, it sounds awesome. Of course, I would never um, get a C6 five star, but I'm sure it's pretty damn good. So to summarize everything, her best artifacts are going to be a two piece mix of Heart of Death, Tenacity, No Bless, or Emblem. You can also use a four piece Emblem if you're running high energy recharge or a four piece No Bless if you really just wanna buff your team. Um, her best weapons, um, by far the Aqua Simulacra and the Skyward Harp are going to be her best options, along with the Stringless. Again, for energy recharge setups, you can run Favonius Warbow or Sacrificial Bow, and they will do the job amazingly well. You can also run Polar Star, 
Fading Twilight, Recurve, Bow, Moon's Moon at High Refinements, and the Sharpshooter's Oath, if you don't have any of the other options. Or any crit weapons, just for the crit rate stat. Now, aside from her being a very beautiful character, she's also a very powerful character. I highly recommend going for her. Um, even if you have a C6 Xingzhou, she's different, and you could also have two Hydra Applicators, if that's all you care about. Um... Yeah, very, very impressed. She really blew my expectations out of the water. Um, after Yaimiko, I was a little bit um, concerned. But I'm really happy that she turned out being so powerful. Because that's a bonus for me. I would have rolled for her if she wasn't powerful too. So, Anyhow, I hope that you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Um, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I said I appreciate it a ton. And have a nice day and good luck on your summons. Bye.